Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Block Theater. And today I'm going to be talking about not a movie that we watch, not not a visual film, but a, but the theater of the mind, an audio drama that's currently in talks to be turned into a film for HBO Max. And this is fascinating on so many levels, at least for me personally. I'm a big audio drama fan. I love uh, Radio of the Mind. In fact, the re one of the reasons why I prefer to do audio rather than be on camera has a lot to do with just getting involved in the voice of the person. That's that's my desire, my draw, and that's why I love podcasts and things like that. And so I find this whole thing to be interesting. Now, there's this, uh, there's this uh, podcast called The Two Princes, and it's from Gimlet. And apparently it's popular enough to to get uh, some pretty decent voice talent on it and now potentially being made into a feature film for HBO Max. Now, according to Deadline here, it says Spotify and HBO Max and final talks to adapt family podcast series, The Two Princes, into film. Now, this is where things are going to get a little bit on the interesting side. And I, t <laughs> and I say this. Not because I'm against it by any stretch of the imagination, but something like this is going to stir uh, negatively with a very interesting group of people out there who are not going to want to talk about the subject matter of this family podcast series and what exactly uh, it's aiming at. So it says here that uh, Spotify is in final negotiations with HBO Max to adapt this hit family podcast, The Two Princes, into a film for the upcoming streamer. This is following a competitive situation with apparently multiple parts bidding. Now, the podcast stars Noah Glavin, Samira Wiley, Cynthia Erivo, Christine Baranski, and Ariel Stachel. Uh, the writer of this series, Christopher, uh, Kevin Christopher Snipes, will work on the adaptation, but it has yet to be determined if the prolific voice cast will be involved in the feature film. Honestly, God, I, at this point, I'd kind of say that something like that would probably be happening. Um, but it also says it's building on the success of shows like Amazon's Homecoming and uh, busy, buzzy announcements like The Nod. There is increasing transmedia demand for original prod, uh, podcasts as IP people for film and TV. And believe it or not, I'm actually working on a side project that would kind of touch upon that. That is something I will be talking about probably down the road as I can solidify uh, some more details with it. But it's something I've wanted to do for a while. And it's again, this is why I'm drawn to this kind of stuff. Because you so much more you can do in a podcast than you can do in feature film. We're talking budget wise. And I think there's a, you can get some pretty interesting and compelling uh, stories that are being told. And there's so many excellent creators out there that would be awesome to just tell these stories in a way that are able to reach people through their ears. And it, it just allows them to imagine. And I think there's a big debt. I think there's a big dependency on the visual uh, in some cases that kind of maybe hurts it. Now, this is where we get into the situation involving controversy and what I what I think will uh, 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 be a very interesting pushback from certain groups out there. Now, it says here, the LGBTQ podcast has been praised for its positive message. Season one follows Prince Rupert, who sets out to break the mysterious curse that's destroying his kingdom. He's ready to face whatever dastardly villain or vile monster stands in his way. But what he isn't prepared for are the bewildering new emotions he feels when he meets the handsome Amir, a rival prince on a quest to save his own realm. Forced to team up, the two princes soon discover that the only thing more difficult than saving their kingdoms is following their hearts. Now, that's a, that's a cute story. It's a cute, cute idea. But you can already kind of see where there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a kid's show, especially here on YouTube, especially with a certain subsect of people. Uh, and apparently in season two, they are going to get married and they're going to, uh, uh, but not everything happens. So bad things happen, of course, on the eve of the wedding, because that's just, that's just how these, how these things tend to work, right? Like, oh, there, it's why I'm interested always in like the post happily ever after it. Cause you know, not, there's always a honeymoon period and then, you know, stuff gets real, right? Everything gets real. And I always find that to be uh, really, really, really funny. But uh, I did queue up this like little clip here to give you guys an idea of just what this is about. Uh, I've listened to a couple minutes of it here and there. It's it's interesting uh, that they were able to get the cast that they did. Christine Baranski is a very talented actress. Samira Wiley is uh, on the younger side, but she's been in a few things. And uh, obviously this has the ability to uh, do very well with a certain audience of people out there, but it can also really be controversial. And I think that could be uh, something that, that does maybe potentially hurt it. So let's check this out. 
forgive the intrusion, your majesty, but this is the fiend we captured trying to steal the forbidden book. Kneel before the queen, thief. Well, a villain, you led my knights on quite the chase. Take off that cloak and uncover your face. <gasps> Rupert? Hi, Mom. And that gives you a bit of an idea of kind of the type of storytelling that it is and the fact that it's going to be over the top and clearly aimed at kids. But they've got a uh, full m music composition. They've got a full score, full soundtrack. They've got, you know, a lot of sound effects. There's like this whole action sequence that that takes uh, place right before that, which I didn't want to play for you guys, mostly because I think when you're just trying to dive into it, you have to kind of it takes a little bit of time to kind of wrap your brain around what you're hearing versus what you're not seeing. And there's there's that. So. The idea is cool. Uh, a friend of mine named Casey Wayland has been doing a zombie survival show called uh, We're Alive for Years that was picked up by the Nerdist a couple of years ago. And that is the type of thing that I think would do much better uh, in, in, in that kind of adaptation. Now, if this is like going to be an animated film, uh, again, you're talking an animated feature film for HBO Max, which has dedicated, which has said it's going to do like 10 to 12 original films a year. And it's going to be animated, aimed at children, dealing with LGBTQ representation. And I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Right. I don't know what's going to happen. That's actually my biggest concern is like, is the controversy only going to fuel it? Because look, let's be fair. We all know it's coming. Right. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy or a cynical bastard. I mean, we know how this stuff is going. There's going to be a bunch of Helen Lovejoys out there screaming. Won't somebody please think of the children? That's going to be happening. What I am curious to see is how they handle it. And then again, uh, how how it does. Uh, you know, and so I, I thought this was an interesting story to cover. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. I want to get your opinion. You guys uh, may be for it. I'm sure there's going to be people in the, in the audience that are going to be all for it. There's going to be people out there that are going to be against it. And I'd like you to let me know why either way. I mean, I really would, especially if you're against it. I think if it's an idea about two princes who uh, who team up together and end up falling in love with one another, uh, that's not an it's not an uncommon trope in these kind of stories. The prince and the princess is usually what it is here. It's just, you know, two princes. Uh, and, and there's that. I mean, that's is it any different? Just really, you know, but again, when you saw. When you, you know, when you, you bring out the kids and you mix it with the, with that kind of representation, uh, there are people who get very, very, very worried about it. They get, they get real pearl clutchy, right? They always have their fainting couch ready. Like I said, a whole bunch of Helen Lovejoys. So I just kind of wanted to put this out there first, right? And so if there's a big backlash, which I, look, I could be wrong. Uh, I could be like, I at least called it, you know what I mean? But I'm pretty sure at this point, this particular story is going to uh, go by the wayside uh, for a while until the first trailer drops. And that's when you're going to see a lot of the reactionaries that are going to be talking about it. So I don't expect this video to do very well in the meantime, but I expect it to get to get to get uh, kind of popular again around the time we see something coming out of this. And I, I'll be very interested to see uh, what people are saying. Uh, if something happens and whether or not I'm just being too cautionary uh, or I just don't have enough faith in our hel our, our fellow man uh, or if I'm right. And I just want to uh, I just wanted to just kind of uh, jump on that one. But anyway, uh, yeah, your thoughts, your opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. And if uh, again, if you guys like the audio stuff, man, let me know. Um, there's a podcast that I want to do. Um, and, I, th you know, you guys may want to help me out. I'm going to be uh, interviewing people. For one, uh, if you guys like zombies specifically, um, we could talk more about that at a later date, but at least want to float it out there for those people who make it this far in the video and uh, have yourself a great day, guys. I'll talk to you all later and peace out.